Here's a site in Dakota County that is the result of improper stormwater management. A development, before development uh, went in, this stream channel is only about 15 feet so uh, wide in the stream channel and only about six inches to a foot deep, mostly when during it had water, it was only about six feet wide and about uh, a foot or six inches deep, but the channel itself was a bit wider. Now what you see is about a 15 to 20 foot deep channel, and this goes on for miles. Um, and the, across, I can't re recall, but it's gotta be 30 to 50 feet across at this point too. So um, this is the result of not handling stormwater runoff in a, in a proper way, and all this sediment get, got blown out down into the river downstream and caused quite a bit of an impact. So this is what we're trying to avoid. We can do a lot of work on our own home property to help the problem here, and ultimately we're going to have to. There's only so much public land available to use for stormwater management. So we all create stormwater management, so one thing that we can do to uh, mitigate for our effects very easily is to drop a couple of rain gardens in. So um, when you consider that a quarter acre residential property, if you've got a 1500 square foot house, which is not uncommon, um, you throw one inch of rain on that, that's about 900 gallons of runoff. If you have a driveway, a thousand square foot driveway, you're looking at about 600 gallons of runoff. If you have what we call green concrete or, or um, grass, um, most of the time in an urban or suburban area, as the result of the construction process, the, the soils are typically very compacted. Um, so what will happen is you'll get about a quarter inch of rain that's being caught up in the roots and the above ground structure of the grass, but then the rest of it will sheet flow off. And that's mostly the case most of the time unless you live on the Oka sand plain and don't have compacted soils, but chances are we do pretty much everywhere in the urban area. So we're looking at about 3,800 gallons of runoff from about an 8,000 square foot um, yard. You add all that up and in a one inch rainfall event, which is about 90% of our rainfall events in Minnesota are an inch or less. So in a one inch rainfall event, we got about five and a half thousand gallons of water, but we get about 30 gallons a year. So that's about 162,000 gallons of water per quarter acre um, household. So that really adds up when you consider the development and what that leads to um, in very short order are lakes that are very green. And if you live in the Twin Cities metro area and you live near a lake, you've got about a 95% probability of having a lake that looks like this at least twice a year. This happens to be Como Lake, um, but this, it could be any urban lake really. Uh, most of our lakes in the metro area are very shallow and can't handle a lot of phosphorus. And when uh, between rain events, um, the one thing that leads to this condition the most is uh, phosphorus. So this is what we're trying to, to manage because about one pound of phosphorus equals about 500 pounds of algae. Um, and I don't enjoy swimming in conditions like that, and I know that my daughter and son don't either. So um, something good that we can, we can do to remove the phosphorus is simply get some rain gardens located in key locations in the landscape. How effective are rain gardens if they're placed and sized properly? Well, uh, Bar Engineering and uh, the city of Burnsville did a nice study to, uh, to look at that uh, question. So they have uh, two adjacent streets, the control street and the treatment street. So for, uh, I believe it was two years, they measured the volume of water leaving both little neighborhoods and before they did anything to the treatment area. Then what they did was come up with a design over the five and a half acres and for the 25 homes that are there, um, 17 rain gardens. They did um, uh, one, two, three, four, looks like four rain leader disconnect rain gardens in the upper between the homes. Then they did the rest of the rain gardens as curb cut rain gardens like I showed earlier. This is a graph of the rain that's discharged from both of those, those neighbor sheds um, before the rain gardens were put in. The blue line is the control neighbor shed or the neighborhood and the red line is the, where the study is going to take place, where the rain gardens are going to be retrofit into the landscape. So this is a hydrograph. It's a representation of how much water is being discharged over time um, by both neighbor sheds. On the next slide, you can see the effect of the rain gardens, what they had. So on this particular rain event, seven tenths of an inch rainfall, the, the area without rain gardens discharged about 35,000 gallons of water. That's the blue line without the rain gardens. The neighbor shed with rain gardens discharged about 1,000 gallons of water. And incidentally, that's a five and a half acres and 25 homes discharging the same amount of rain that my one house does in St. Paul. 
that's a really good job at restoring the hydrology of pre-development conditions. And that's what we're ultimately trying to do across the metro area is, is get that, achieve that goal. It's going to take some time and like I said, it's going to require the, uh, the help of, of the public um, getting some rain gardens on their own properties as well. Some of the resources that are available to you. Um, we talked a lot about um, what rain gardens are, where they're located, different styles, different appearances, different goals, different functions. Um, but we didn't talk much about how to actually size and build them and plant them. Um, and so I'm going to point you to some resources that you can then take it to the next step. And it's really fairly easy. You can either do it all yourself, do none of it yourself, or some combination thereof. So the first place to stop for any technical assistance would be um, your government resources. It's a nice free public service. You can stop by your city, your soil and water conservation district, your watershed districts or watershed management organizations, and they'll all have resources available at their fingertips to help you um, with um, the technical um, design if, if, you've, if you would like it. They also, a lot of times, depending on where you are, may have cost share opportunities for these types of projects. It's in the public's best interest for these to go in um, from an economic standpoint as well as an environmental standpoint. And so therefore there is some cost share available for people that are interested in putting these in um, in the landscape. So start with the conservation districts, the watershed management organizations and watershed districts out there and talk to your city and once you do that you'll have you'll be fairly plugged in and can get the resources available to you to help you. If you decide that you would like to do it yourself, I highly encourage you to do this because it's a fun project. There are a couple of resources you can take advantage of out there. So on the internet, a local source that's uh, kind of dialed in really well here is the Blue Thumb web page. It's just www bluethumb.org. It has everything you need to know um, to get started with uh, native gardening, rain gardens, and if you happen to live on the lake, it'll help you de develop some shoreline stabilization practices as well. Um, there's also going to be a list of contractors that are partners so um, with the Blue Thumb program. The idea behind Blue Thumb is to plant for water smart landscaping. And uh, um, so they have been through a class or have helped with the Blue Thumb nonprofit program in some way, shape, or form. And you can start there if you're looking for designers or installers or places to buy native plants in Minnesota or, or Wisconsin. So I encourage you to visit that site. If you're at that site, you can also potentially um, buy a, a really good resource that's written by a couple of local authors. Um, it's a Blue Thumb Guide to Rain Gardens. And uh, it's the best resource available to you to buy for home rain gardening, for sure. Um, what it does provide you information for is rain leader disconnect projects. Um, the, the curb cut rain garden projects that I talked about earlier, um, you're going to need help with that. So don't, don't walk out to your curb and smash, it, uh, smash your curbs with a, with a sledgehammer just yet. Start with the rain leader disconnect project first. And if you're interested in the uh, curb cut rain gardens, then you're going to need help from the watershed district and the conservation district and, and the city on that. But for rain uh, leader disconnect projects, by all means, check out um, uh, Shaw and Schmidt's and Dodd's um, book here on rain gardens. So whether you decide to do a rain garden project yourself or if you want to get some technical assistance or hire out the whole project, um, it's a great way for the homeowner to reduce the volume of runoff leaving their property and to uh, increase the quality of the runoff that's making it to our lakes and our rivers and our resources. Uh, so thank you very much for um, listening to uh, me talk about rain gardens. And I want to thank again the Metro Conservation Districts, uh, Ramsey Conservation Districts, and the Vadnais Lakes Area Watershed Management Organization for sponsoring the, uh, the project. Thank you.